Are you spending way too long on your calling and ordering session prep? I get it, you get back from a photography session and you're exhausted. But then you look at your card and you feel so overwhelmed by the work that's ahead of you. Today I'm going to share with you my secret system to calling and session prep in 10 minutes or less. My five step process will change your life as a photographer and allow you to take back more of your time doing what you love, photography. Are you ready? Let's dive in. Oh, and be sure to stay till the end. I'm talking about how to save storage on your computer. We all need that as photographers. Hey, I'm Tracy and I help photographers stay forever booked out without the hustle. Be sure to grab my free guide outlining my five best tips to booking clients without Facebook ads. The first photography editing tip in my quick calling guide is don't overshoot. This is something a lot of photographers struggle with and I get it. it used to be that same photographer. But as soon as I stopped overshooting, my calling process got so much easier. My recommendation, pose the client, take two photos of that angle, find the next angle, take two more photos of that angle, and then move on to the next pose. You do not need 20 photos of the same photo in the same spot. On average for a one hour session, I take between 150 to 200 images. At the ordering session, I show my client anywhere between 60 and 90 images. If you wanna know exactly what poses, I photograph every session to help me sell between three and $5,000 albums. Be sure to check out my posing guide in the TLC shop and I'll link that in the description below. Now there are four rounds to my quick calling guide and I'm gonna take you through those right now. So in round one, we're removing blinks, blurs, and duplicates. All right, here we are in Lightroom and I'm just gonna go through round one, which is just, like I said, removing duplicates, blurry photos, anything with blinks. So let's go through it. Now I do wanna start this with saying that my associate sent me these over after her session with this client. And what she does is go through and use Aftershoot. So in the bottom, you'll see a, like a green box around that. I halfway pay attention to these. The real cool thing about this is it will flag everything red that is just like a absolute no good photo. So I've already taken those out, but this one is just going through and just kind of telling me which one is the best one, yet I don't always listen to that and you're going to see me definitely not listening to this. Also, because this is my associate's uh session, you're also going to notice that there are more photos than I would normally take. She is still getting used to my processes. And so she actually uh, photographed 231 photos. Totally fine. Still not a crazy amount. I'm completely fine with 231. But all right, let's get going. So you can see all three of those are really close. So I'm going to exit those two. Those weren't my favorite just because of her knee sticking up. It just, I didn't love them. I didn't love the light on her face. And um, Ashley was also telling me that she was struggling with the light that morning. Normally she is amazing with light, but she was struggling with it that morning just because um, it was early and darker outside. So that's totally fine. I'm completely fine with it. It still looks really pretty. Now, why I chose this one over this one, or this one over this one, is because of where her lips are placed. So that's the only reason there. Just going through them and kind of seeing, I, would, I just really wanted to see why this one was flag green. Yep, but I'm very happy with the green ones that it chose. But like I said, sometimes after shoot is great, sometimes it's not. And I always want to check the other ones before I just totally trust it. This girl is ripped. It's actually her peak week. Uh, she's a bodybuilder. So she is ripped. She's one of my regulars. I actually really like that one. I'm not sure why I didn't flag, why it flagged that one. We're going to go with this one over this one. 
just because the horizon line is a little straighter. I like the way her foot is in this one better. So you see, sometimes you choose yellow over green, and that's why we don't trust AI completely. <laughs> I actually like this one over this one better just because it gives me a little bit more room above her nose to correct anything I might want to. Went with this one because her abs are a little bit tighter and the line is a little straighter. And I'm going to go with this one over that one just because I get a little bit more space at the bottom. Round two is running through one more time just to make sure that I'm happy with the photos that I'm showing my clients. Here's what I mean. Okay, so here we're just going back through a quick run through. Now, I only have 55 photos. I want you to know normally I like to have 60 to 80, even up to 100 for an ordering session. I only have 55 this time because this was actually a model session for content. If you guys want me to do a video on exactly why I do model content days, totally happy to do that. But that's what this was. And that's why I was a little bit pickier than I normally would have been any other given day. Um, just because any other day for a regular client or anything like that, I would have wanted to make sure that every single photo, like I have every expression possible so that she can choose her expression. But in this case, because it's a model, I know what I want to post on Instagram, what I want in my portfolio. So I was just being a little bit pickier so that I could take a little less time later when I'm sending them to my retoucher. Also, I don't want to send 100 photos to my retoucher. I don't need that many. I don't need that many different photos um, for my Instagram or anything like that. So let's run through these. Just make sure that everything is exactly how we want it. If I'm being honest, I will probably go through these one more time just to see, but I'll come back and do that later. Very happy with what I have so far, but because this, like I said, a model session, I'll be a little bit pickier here in a few minutes after this video. I just wanted to show you guys exactly what this looks like in my, um, normal session prep. Round three to my quick calling guide is color correcting and straightening these photos. Okay, so now we're on round three, but before we dive into round three, what I wanna show you is see a lot of these are green, but you can definitely see that I kept some yellows over greens, and that's exactly why we're not totally trusting everything that AI does for us anymore, and we want to be very picky with what we're doing. So now what we wanna do is go in and color correct and straighten. Um, Ashley is very, very good at getting things straight, so I don't have to do too much. Occasionally I'll have to do a little bit and then I tend to shoot on or I tend to like the cooler images. So I go in and choose that, turn the blacks down, increase the shadows. Pretty happy with that. She's very good at getting spot on in camera and I have to go through and just change a few little things. So what I did back here when I this screen came up, what I was doing was copying those, copying the settings that I put in there. So what I do, I copy, and then I go to the next one. Typically going to be a pretty similar one, paste those settings. One thing I do, though, is make sure everything's pretty straight. And I do tend to crop in a little bit. I tend to like tighter images of the woman. So pretty much, I think we're gonna go a little bit warmer. Yeah. Maybe. Right about there. I 
I will say this isn't my exact favorite image, so there's a good chance this one gets cold when I'm um, sending them to my retoucher. But for now, we're going to leave it just so you can see the process. Just going through, checking to make sure everything looks good. I think for this one, I would definitely crop in a little bit. Not a lot, but a little. The way that I shoot, like my style is always more about the woman and less about like the background and things like that. This one would go down exposure just a tiny bit. And I mean, these are totally my settings. This is not, you do not have to shoot like this. You do not have to color correct like this. This is just what I do. Round four of my quick coloring guide is a final run through. Okay, for the final run through, we are just going through and making sure we are happy with everything. We don't need to fix anything. That one looks like it could be a little bit straighter. Actually, I'll probably go in and cut that corner off just because why not? And these, this is exactly how I will show it to my clients just color corrected and that's it after they've purchased their photos after they choose the photos that's when I'll go in and have my retoucher retouch them but we're not spending time retouching photos that have not been purchased that's very important please don't waste your time doing those kind of things Sometimes your first catch, you don't get the, get them exactly as straight as you want them. That seems to be my problem today. But otherwise, they are looking pretty good. Like I said, probably going in and culling some more of these after. But I wanted this, I wanted to treat this like a regular session so you could see my full process like these there's two of those I'll pick one of those later for sure for my models like if this is something you're interested in for my models I tend to try to be anywhere between 20 and 30 photos that I send to them that's a good number to have for Instagram if I have more than that my audience gets a little bit bored with uh with those photos and finally, I have a few quick notes. Are you wondering when I do the final retouch for each photo? Well, I don't. At least not until they've purchased the photos after the ordering session. For one thing, I don't want to waste my time retouching photos that won't be purchased. My time is too valuable for that and so is yours. And you might be wondering, is this going to hurt my album sell? Will they still purchase photos if they aren't perfect? I have not retouched a photo since 2016 before an ordering session. And my boudoir business brings in multiple six figures every single year. I promise that as long as you showcase your best work in your portfolio, your clients will absolutely trust that the images you provide will be true to your work. Now it's going to be very nerve wracking going into that first ordering session without fully retouched photos. But after that first session, you're going to be fine and wondering why you wasted so much time before. By the way, if you want to go into your ordering sessions even more confident, be sure to watch this YouTube video called The Secret to Pricing as a Boudoir Photographer. The final step of my photography quick culling guide is to export the photos from Lightroom. Now everyone is going to have their own systems for how they store their photos, so take what I'm about to say with a grain of salt. But early in my career, I filled up the storage on my computer with my photos. And that's because I wasn't using an external hard drive. I didn't know any better. I learned though, and that's why now I keep all of my sessions in a specific folder on three external hard drives sorted by the year of their session. And that's why the final step is to export and remove your photos from Lightroom. So you don't waste all of your computer storage with your Lightroom catalog. I know there are ways that you can store your Lightroom catalog in the cloud, but I like my system. Don't come at me in the comments. Okay, so I'm in Lightroom here. I am going to export my photos. I go to these little four boxes right there. By the way, this is Lightroom Classic because I don't wanna change, don't make me. So to select all, you do Command A, and then you hit Export. I have them exported to my 
hard drive, hit boudoir, hit the year, choose, and then um, new folder, boudoir, Victoria. Create, choose. I keep these in raw so that I know that these are ready for the ordering session and then I just hit export. By the way, if you wanna know what my system is to storing eight years of photos on my external hard drives, let me know in the comments. And that's my quick photography culling guide. Be sure to subscribe to get notified on my next video, which is on the best natural light photography tips for boudoir. And while you wait, check out this other video, which is called Step by Step, How to Start a Boudoir Photography Business in the most profitable way. If this was helpful, let me know and give it a like. Lainey says thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.